Act One of The Busybody by Susanna Sans Livre. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Busybody, a comedy, written by Mrs. Susanna Sans Livre. Quem tulit ad sinam ventoso gloria curo, ex animat lentus spectator sedulus inflat. Sic leve, sic parvum est, animum quod laudis avarum, subruit aut reficit. Horatius, Letters, Book Two, Letter One. To the Right Honourable John Lord Summers, Lord President of Her Majesty's Most Honourable Privy Council. May it please your Lordship, as it's an established custom in these latter ages, for all writers, particularly the poetical, to shelter their productions under the protection of the most distinguished, whose approbation produces a kind of inspiration much superior to that which the heathenish poets pretended to derive from their fictitious Apollo, so it was my ambition to address one of my weak performances to your lordship, who, by universal consent, are justly allowed to be the best judge of all kinds of writing. I was indeed at first deterred from my design by a thought that it might be accounted unpardonable rudeness to obtrude a trifle of this nature to a person whose sublime wisdom moderates that counsel which at this critical juncture overrules the fate of all Europe. But then I was encouraged by reflecting that Lelius and Scipio the two greatest men in their time among the Romans, both for political and military virtues, in the height of their important affairs, thought the perusal and improving of Terence's comedies the noblest way of unbinding their minds. I own I were guilty of the highest vanity should I presume to put my composures in parallel with those of that celebrated dramatist. But, then again, I hope that your lordship's native goodness and generosity, in condescension to the taste of the best and fairest part of the town, who have been pleased to be diverted by the following scenes, will excuse and overlook such faults as your nicer judgment might discern. And here, my lord, the occasion seems fair for me to engage in a panegyric upon those natural and acquired abilities which so brightly adorn your person. But I shall resist that temptation, being conscious of the inequality of a female pen to so masculine an attempt, and having no other ambition than to subscribe myself my lord, your lordship's most humble and most obedient servant, Susanna Sans Livre. Prologue by the author of Tunbridge Walks Though modern prophets were exposed of late, the author could not prophesy his fate. If with such scenes an audience had been fired, the poet must have really been inspired. But these, alas, are melancholy days for modern prophets and for modern plays. Yet since prophetic lies please fools a fashion, and women are so fond of agitation, to men of sense I'll prophesy anew, and tell you wondrous things that will prove true. Undaunted colonels will to camps repair, assured there'll be no skirmishes this year. On our own terms will flow the wished-for peace, all wars except twixt man and wife will cease. The grand monarch may wish his son a throne, but hardly will advance to lose his own. This season most things bear a smiling face, but players in summer have a dismal case. Since your appearance only is our act of grace, court ladies will to country seats be gone. My lord can't all the year live great in town, where, wanting operas, basset, and a play, they'll sigh and stitch a gown to pass the time away. Gay city wives at Tunbridge will appear, whose husbands long have laboured for an heir, where many a courtier may their wants relieve, but by the waters only they conceive. 
the Fleet Street sempstress, toast of temple sparks that run spruce neckcloths for attorney's clerks, at Cupid's gardens will her hours regale, sing fair Dorinda and drink bottled ale. At all assemblies, rakes are up and down, and gamesters where they think they are not known. Should I denounce our author's fate today, to cry down prophecies, you'd damn the play. Yet whims like these have sometimes made you laugh, tis tattling all like Isaac Bickerstaff. Since war and places claim the bards that write, be kind and bear a woman's treat tonight. Let your indulgence all her fears allay, and none but woman-haters damn this play. Dramatis Personae Sir George Airy, a gentleman of four thousand a year, in love with Miranda. Read by Greg Giordano Sir Francis Grape, guardian to Miranda and Marplot. Father to Charles, in love with Miranda. Read by Mike Manalakis Charles, friend to Sir George, in love with Isabinda. Read by Jim Lock. Sir Jealous Traffic, a merchant that had lived some time in Spain, a great admirer of the Spanish customs, father to Isabinda. Read by Alan Mapstone. Marplot, a sort of a silly fellow, cowardly, but very inquisitive to know everybody's business generally spoils all he undertakes, yet without design. Read by Todd. Whisper, Servant to Charles. Read by Larry Wilson. Miranda, an heiress worth thirty thousand pound, really in love with Sir George, but pretends to be so with her guardian, Sir Francis. Read by Jen Broda. Isabinda, daughter to Sir Jealous in love with charles but designed for a spanish merchant by her father and kept up from the sight of all men read by grace buchanan patch her woman read by sonia sent well woman to miranda read by wendy Katzhiller. butler read by david purdy servant Read by Andrew Gantz. Draw. Read by Michelle Eaton. Stage directions. Read by Adrian Stevens. The Busybody. Act One. Scene. The Park. Sir George Airy meeting Charles. Ah, Sir George Airy. A birding thus early. What forbidden game roused you so soon? for no lawful occasion could invite a person of your figure abroad at such unfashionable hours there are some men charles whom fortune has left free from inquietudes who are diligently studious to find ways and means to make themselves uneasy is it possible that anything in nature can ruffle the temper of a man whom the four seasons of the year complement with as many thousand pounds, nay, and a father at rest with his ancestors? Why, there it is now. A man that wants money thinks none can be unhappy that has it, but my affairs are in such a whimsical posture that it will require a calculation of my nativity to find if my gold will relieve me or not. <laughs> never consult the stars about that gold has a power beyond them gold unlocks the midnight councils gold outdoes the wind becalms the ship or fills her sails gold is omnipotent below it makes whole armies fight or fly it buys even souls and bribes the wretches to betray their country then what can thy business be that gold won't serve thee in why i'm in love in love ho oh, oh, ho in love <laughs> with what prithee a cherubin no with a woman a woman good <laughs> and gold not help thee but suppose i'm in love with two ay if thou art in love with two hundred gold will fetch em i warrant thee boy but who are they 
who are they come one is a lady whose face i never saw but witty as an angel the other beautiful as venus and a fool for aught i know for i never spoke to her but you can inform me i am charmed by the wit of one and die for the beauty of the other and pray which are you in quest of now i prefer the sensual pleasure i'm for her i've seen who is thy father's ward miranda nay then i pity you for the jew my father will no more part with her and thirty thousand pound than he would with a guinea to keep me from starving now you see gold can't do everything charles yes for tis her gold that bars my father's gate against you why if he is this avaricious wretch how camp'st thou by such a liberal education not a souse out of his pocket i assure you i had an uncle who defrayed that charge but for some little wildnesses of youth though he made me his heir left ad my guardian till i came to years of discretion which i presume the old gentleman will never think i am and now he has got the estate into his clutches it does me no more good than if it lay in prester john's dominions what canst thou find no stratagem to redeem it i have made many essays to no purpose though want the mistress of invention still tempts me on yet still the old fox is too cunning for me i am upon my last project which if it fails then for my last refuge a brown mousquet what is it can i assist thee not yet when you can i have confidence enough in you to ask it i am always ready but what does he intend to do with miranda is she to be sold in private or will he put her up by way of auction at who bids most if so he gad i'm for him my gold as you say shall be subservient to my pleasure to deal ingeniously with you sir george i know very little of her or home for since my uncle's death and my return from travel i have never been well with my father he thinks my expenses too great and i his allowance too little he never sees me but he quarrels and to avoid that i shun his house as much as possible the report is he intends to marry her himself can she consent to it yes faith so they say but i tell you i am wholly ignorant of the matter miranda and i are like two violent members of a contrary party i can scarce allow her beauty though all the world does nor she me civility for that contempt i fancy she plays the mother-in-law already and sets the old gentleman on to do mischief then i've your free consent to get her ay and my helping hand if occasion be <sighs> yonder's a fool coming this way let's avoid him what marplot no no he's my instrument there's a thousand conveniences in him he'll lend me his money when he has any run of my errands and be proud aunt in short he'll pimp for me lie for me drink for me do anything but fight for me and that i trust to my own arm for nay then he's to be endured i never knew his qualifications before enter marplot with a patch across his face and dear charles yours aside ha ah, sir george airy the man in the world i have an ambition to be known to give me thy hand dear boy a good assurance but hark ye how came your beautiful countenance clouded in the wrong place i must confess tis a little malapropos but no matter for that a word with you charles prithee introduce me to sir george he is a man of wit and i'd give ten guineas to when you have em you mean ay when i have em oh pox you cut the thread of my discourse i would give ten guineas i say to be ranked in his acquaintance well tis a vast addition to a man's fortune according to the rout of the world to be seen in the company of leading men for then we are all thought to be politicians or whigs or jacks or high flyers or low flyers or levellers and so forth for you must know we all heard in parties now 
then a fool for diversion is out of fashion i find yes without it be a mimicking fool and they are darlings everywhere but prithee introduce me well on condition you'll give us a true account how you came by that morning nose i will i'll do it sir george here's a gentleman has a passionate desire to kiss your hand oh i honour men of the sword and i presume this gentleman is lately come from spain or portugal by his scars not really sir george mine sprung from a civil fury happening last night into the groom porters i had a strong inclination to go ten guineas with a sort of a sort of a kind of a milksop as i thought a pox of the dice he flung out and my pockets being empty as charles knows they sometimes are he proved a surly north breton and he broke my face for my deficiency <laughs> and did not you draw draw sir why i did but lay my hand upon my sword to make a swift retreat and he roared out now the deal of my soul sir can ye touch your steel as whip mine through your wen <laughs> <laughs> face was the word so you walked off i suppose yes for i avoid fighting purely to be serviceable to my friends you know your friends are much obliged to you sir i hope you'll rank me in that number sir george a bow from the side box or to be seen in your chariot binds me ever yours trifles you may command em when you please provided he may command you me why i live for no other purpose sir george i have the honour to be caressed by the most of the reigning toasts of the town i'll tell them you are the finest gentleman no no prithee let me alone to tell the ladies my parts can you convey a letter upon occasion or deliver a message with an air of business ha <laughs> with the assurance of a page and the gravity of a statesman you know miranda what my sister ward why her guardian is mine we are fellow sufferers ah oh, he is a covetous cheating sanctified curmudgeon that sir francis gripe is a damned old i suppose friend you forget that he is my father <clears throat> I, I beg your pardon charles but it is for your sake i hate him why i say the world is mistaken in him his outside piety makes him every man's executor and his inside cunning makes him every heir's jailer egad charles i'm half persuaded that thou art some ward too and never of his getting for thou art as honest a dubache as ever cuckold man of quality a pleasant fellow the dog is diverting sometimes or there would be no enduring his impertinence he is pressing to be employed and willing to execute but some ill fate generally attends all he undertakes and he oftener spoils an intrigue than helps it if i miscarry it is none of my fault i follow my instructions yes witness the merchant's wife pish pox that was an accident what was it prithee why you must know i'd lent a certain merchant my hunting horses and was to have met his wife in his absence sending him along with my groom to make the compliment and to deliver a letter to the lady at the same time what does he do but gives the husband the letter and offers her the horses i remember you was even with me for you denied the letter to be yours and swore i had a design upon her which my bones paid for come sir george let's walk round if you are not engaged for i have sent my man upon a little earnest business and have ordered him to bring me the answer into the part marplow aside business and i not know it egad i'll watch him i must beg your pardon charles i am to meet your father here my father ay and about the oddest bargain perhaps you've ever heard of but i'll not impart till i know the success marplow aside 
what can his business be with sir francis now i would give all the world to know it why the devil should not one know every man's concern prosperity to it whatever it be i have private affairs too over a bottle we'll compare notes Marplo, aside charles knows i love a glass as well as any man i'll make one shall it be to-night ah i long to know their secrets enter whisper sir sir miss patch says isabinda's spanish father has quite spoiled the plot and she can't meet with you in the park but he infallibly will go out this afternoon she says but i must step again to know the hour marplo aside what did whisper say i'll go stark mad if i'm not let into the secret cursed misfortune come along with me my heart feels pleasure at her name sir george yours we'll meet at the old place the usual hour agreed i think i see sir francis yonder exit marplot you must excuse me i am engaged exit engaged egad i'll engage my life i'll know what your engagement is exit miranda coming out of a chair let the chair wait my servant that dogged sir george said he was in the park enter patch ha miss patch alone did not you tell me you had contrived a way to bring isabinda to the park oh madam your ladyship can't imagine what a wretched disappointment we have met with just as i had fetched a suit of my clothes for disguise comes my old master into his closet which is right against her chamber door this struck us into a terrible fright at length i put on a grave face and asked him if he was at leisure for his chocolate in hopes to draw him out of his hole but he snapped my nose off no i shall be busy here these two hours at which my poor mistress seeing no way of escape ordered me to wait on your ladyship with the sad relation unhappy isabinda was ever anything so unaccountable as the humour of sir jealous traffic oh madam it's his living so long in spain he vows he'll spend half his estate but he'll be a parliament man on purpose to bring in a bill for women to wear veils and the other odious spanish customs he swears it is the height of impudence to have a woman seen barefaced even at church and scarce believe there's a true begotten child in the city <laughs> how the old fool torments himself suppose he could introduce his rigid rules does he think we could not match them in contrivance no no let the tyrant man make what laws he will if there's a woman under the government i warrant she finds a way to break em is his mind set upon the spaniard for his son-in-law still ay and he expects him by the next fleet which drives his daughter to melancholy and despair but madam i find you retain the same gay cheerful spirit you had when i waited on your ladyship my lady is mighty good humour too and i have found a way to make sir jealousy believe i am wholly in his interest when my real design is to serve her he makes me her jailer and i set her at liberty i know thy prolific brain would be of singular service to her or i had not parted with thee to her father but madam the report is that you are going to marry your guardian it is necessary such a report should be patch but is it true madam that's not absolutely necessary i thought it was only the old strain coaxing him still for your own and railing at all the young fellows about town in my mind now you are as ill plagued with your guardian madam as my lady is with her father no i have liberty wench that she wants what would she give now to be in this disably in the open air nay more in pursuit of the young fellow she likes for that's my case i assure thee as for that madam she's even with you for though she can't come abroad we have a way to bring him home in spite of the old argus now patch your opinion of my choice 
for here he comes. Ha! Huh, my guardian with him. What could be the meaning of this? I'm sure Sir Francis can't know me in this dress. Let's observe him. They withdraw. Enter Sir Francis Gripe and Sir George Airy. Verily, Sir George, thou wilt repent throwing away thy money so. For I tell thee sincerely, Miranda, my charge, does not love a young fellow. They are all vicious, and seldom make good husbands. In sober sadness she cannot abide them. Miranda, peeping. In sober sadness you are mistaken. What can this mean? Look ye, Sir Francis. Whether she can or cannot abide young fellows is not the business. Will you take the fifty guineas? In good truth, I will not, for I knew thy father. He was a hearty, wary man, and I cannot consent that his son should squander away what he saved to no purpose. Miranda, peeping. Now in the name of wonder, what bargain can he be driving about me for fifty guineas? I wish it been for the first night's lodging, madam. Well, Sir Francis, since you are so conscientious for my father's sake, then permit me the favour gratis. Miranda peeping. The favour? Oh, my life! I believe tis as you said, Patch. No, verily. If thou dost not buy thy experience, thou would never be wise. Therefore, give me a hundred and try fortune. The scruples arose, I find, from the scanty sum. Let me see, a hundred guineas? Takes them out of a purse and chinks them. Ha! Huh, they have a very pretty sound, and a very pleasing look. But then, Miranda, but if she should be cruel... Miranda, peeping. As ten to one I shall... I do consider on it. <laughs> no, I'll do it. Do it? What? Whether you will or no, madam? Come to the point. Here's the gold. Sum up the conditions. Sir Francis pulling out a paper. Miranda peeping. Ay, for heaven's sake do, for my expectation is on the rack. Well, at your own peril be it. Ay, ay, go on. Imprimis, you are to be admitted into my house in order to move your suit to Miranda for the space of ten minutes, without let or molestation, provided I remain in the same room. But out of earshot. Well, well, I don't desire to hear what you say. <laughs> in consideration, I am to have that purse and a hundred guineas. Take it. Gives him the purse. Miranda, peeping. So tis well it's no worse. I'll fit you both. And this agreement is to be performed today. Ay, ay, the sooner the better, poor fool. How Miranda and I shall laugh at him. Well, Sir George, ha, ha, ha. Take the last sound of your guineas, ha, ha, ha. Chinksome, exit. Miranda, peeping. Sure he does not know that I am Miranda. A very extraordinary bargain I have made, truly. If she should be really in love with this old cuff now, <laughs> that's morally impossible. But then, what hopes have I to succeed? I never spoke to her. Miranda, peeping. Say you so? Then I am safe. But though my tongue never spoke, my eyes said a thousand things, and my hopes flattered me hers answered them. If I'm lucky, if not, tis but a hundred guineas thrown away. Miranda and Patch come forwards. Upon what, Sir George? Ha! <laughs> my incognito, upon a woman, madam. They are the worst things you can deal in, and damage the soonest. Your very breath destroys them, and I fear you'll never see your return, Sir George. <laughs> Were they more brittle in China, and dropped to pieces with a touch? Every atom of her I have ventured at, 
if she is but mistress of thy wit balances ten times the sum prithee let me see thy face by no means that may spoil your opinion of my sense rather confirm it madam so rob the lady of your gallantry sir no child a dish of chocolate in the morning never spoils my dinner the other lady i design a set meal so there's no danger matrimony <laughs> what crimes have you committed against the god of love that he should revenge him so severely to stamp husband upon your forehead for my folly in having so often met you here without pursuing the laws of nature and exercising her command but i resolve ere we part now to know who you are where you live and what kind of flesh and blood your face is therefore unmask and don't put me to the trouble of doing it for you my face is the same flesh and blood with my hand sir george which if you'll be so rude to provoke you apply it to my cheek the lady's favours are always welcome but i must have that cloud withdrawn taking hold of her remember you are in the park child and what a terrible thing would it be to lose this pretty white hand and how will it sound in a chocolate house that sir george airy rudely pulled off a lady's mask when he had given her his honour that he never would directly or indirectly endeavour to know her till she gave him leave patch aside <sighs> i wish we were safe out but if that lady thinks fit to pursue and meet me at every turn like some troubled spirit shall i be blamed if i inquire into the reality i would have nothing dissatisfied in a female shape what shall i do pause ah prithee consider for thou shalt find me very much at thy service suppose sir the lady should be in love with you oh i'll return the obligation in a moment and marry her <laughs> that's not the way to love her child if he discovers me i shall die which way shall i escape let me see pauses well madam i have it sir george tis fit you should allow something if you'll excuse my face and turn your back if you look upon me i shall sink even masked as i am i will confess why i have engaged you so often who i am and where i live well to show you i'm a man of honour i accept the conditions Aside. let me but once know those and the face won't be long a secret to me what mean you madam to get off tis something indecent to turn one's back upon a lady but you command and i obey turns his back come madam begin first then it was my unhappy lot to see you at paris draws back a little while and speaks at a ball upon a birthday your shape and air charmed my eyes your wit and complacence my soul and from that fatal night i loved you drawing back and when you left the place grief seized me so no rest my heart no sleep my eyes could know last i resolved a hazardous point to try and quit the place in search of liberty exit excellent i hope she's handsome well now madam to the other two things your name and where you live i am a gentleman and this confession will not be lost upon me nay prithee don't weep but go on for i find my heart melts in thy behalf speak quickly or i shall turn about not yet poor lady she expects i should comfort her 
and to do her justice she has said enough to encourage me turns about ha huh? gone the devil jilted why what a tale has she invented of paris balls and birthdays ye gad i'd give ten guineas to know who this gypsy is curse of my folly i deserve to lose her what woman can forgive a man that turns his back the bold and resolute in love and war to conquer take the right and swiftest way the boldest lover soonest gains the fair as courage makes the rudest force obey take no denial and the dames adore ye closely pursue them and they fall before ye end of act one act two of the busybody by susanna sans livre this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org act the second enter sir francis gripe miranda <laughs> Oh, I shall die with laughing. The most romantic adventure. <laughs> what does the odious young fop mean? A hundred pieces to talk an hour with me? <laughs> and I'm to be by too. There's the jest. Dodd, if it had been in private, I should not have cared to trust the young dog. Indeed and indeed, but you might, Guardy. Now, methinks there's nobody handsomer than you so neat so clean so good-humoured and so loving pretty rogue pretty rogue and so thou shalt find me if thou dost prefer thy guardy before these caperers of the age thou shalt outshine the queen's box on an opera night thou shalt be the envy of the ring for i will carry thee to hyde park and thy equipage shalt surpass the what you call em ambassadors nay i'm sure the discreet part of my sex will envy me more for the inside furniture when you are in it than my outside equipage a cunning baggage a faith thou art and a wise one too and to show thee thou hast not chose amiss i'll this moment disinherit my son and settle my whole estate upon thee miranda aside there's an old rogue now no guardy i would not have your name be so black in the world you know my father's will runs that i am not to possess my estate without your consent till i'm five-and-twenty you shall only abate the odd seven years and make me mistress of my estate to-day and i'll make you master of my person to-morrow well, that may not be safe no chargey i'll settle it upon thee for pin-money and that will be every bit as well thou knowest miranda aside unconscionable old wretch bribe me with my own money which way shall i get out of his hands well what art thou thinking on my girl huh. how to banter sir george miranda aside i must not pretend to banter he knows my tongue too well no guardy i have thought of a way to confound him more than all i could say if i should talk to him seven years how's that oh i'm transported i'm ravished i'm mad miranda aside it would make you mad if you knew all i'll not answer him one word but be dumb to all he says dumb good <laughs> excellent <laughs> i think i have you now sir george dumb he'll go distracted well she's the wittiest rogue ha <laughs> ha dumb i can but laugh ha <laughs> ha to think how damned mad he'll be when he finds he has given his money away for a dumb show ha <laughs> ha nay guardy if he did but know my thoughts of him it would make him ten times madder <laughs> ay so it would charge ye to hold him in such derision to scorn to answer him to be dumb ha 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 enter charles how now sirrah who let you in 
my necessity sir sir your necessities are very impertinent and ought to have sent before they entered sir i knew twas a word would gain admittance nowhere then sirrah how durst you rudely thrust that upon your father which nobody else would omit sure the name of a son is a sufficient plea i ask this lady's pardon if i have intruded ay ay ask her pardon and her blessing too if you expect anything from me i believe yours sir francis in a purse of guineas would be more material your son may have business with you i'll retire i guess his business but i'll dispatch him i expect the knight every minute he'll be in readiness certainly my expectation is more upon the wing than yours old gentleman exit well sir nay it is very ill sir my circumstances are i'm sure and what's that to me sir your management should have made them better if you please to entrust me with the management of my estate i shall endeavour it sir what to set upon a card and buy a lady's favour at the price of a thousand pieces to rig out an equipage for a wench or by your carelessness enrich your steward to fine for sheriff or put up for parliament man i hope i should not spend it this way however i ask only for what my uncle left me yours you may dispose of as you please sir that i shall out of your reach i assure you sir a dod these young fellows think old men get estates for nothing but them to squander away in dicing wenching drinking dressing and so forth i think i was born a gentleman sir i'm sure my uncle bred me like one from which you would affer sir that gaming whoring and the pox are requisites to a gentleman charles aside monstrous when i would ask him only for support he falls into these unmannerly reproaches i must though against my will employ invention and by stratagem relieve myself sirrah what is it you mutter sirrah huh holds up his cane i say you shan't have a groat out of my hands till i please and may be i'll never please and what's that to you nay to be robbed or have one's throat cut is not much what's that sirrah would ye rob me or cut my throat ye rogue heaven forbid sir i said no such thing mercy on me what a plague it is to have a son of one and twenty who wants to elbow one out of one's life to edge himself into the estate enter marplow he gad he's here i was afraid i had lost him his secret could not be with his father his wants are public there guardian your servant charles i know by that sorrowful countenance of thine the old man's fist is as close as his strong box but i'll help thee so here's another extravagant coxcomb that will spend his fortune before he comes to it but he shall pay swinging interest and so let the fool go on well what does necessity bring you to sir you have hit it guardian i want a hundred pound for what oh for a hundred things i can't for my life tell you for what sir i suppose i've received all the answer i am like to have oh the devil if he gets out before me i shall lose him again ay sir and you may be marching as soon as you please i must see a change in your temper ere you find one in mine pray sir dispatch me the money sir i'm in mighty haste fool take this and go to the cashier i shan't be long plagued with thee gives him a note devil take the cashier i shall certainly have charles gone before i come back again runs out well sir i take my leave but remember you expose an only son to all the miseries of wretched poverty which too often lays the plan for scenes of mischief stay charles i have a sudden thought come into my head may prove to thy advantage ha does he relent my lady wrinkle worth forty thousand pound sets up for a handsome young husband she prays thee t'other day though the matchmakers can get twenty guineas for a sight of her i can introduce thee for nothing my lady wrinkle sir why 
she has but one eye then she'll see but have your extravagance sir condemn me to such a piece of deformity toothless dirty wry-necked hunchbacked hag hunchbacked so much the better than she has a rest for her misfortunes for thou wilt load her swingingly now i warrant you think this is no offer of a father forty thousand pound is nothing with you yes sir i think it is too much a young beautiful woman with half the money would be more agreeable i thank you sir but you chose better for yourself i find out of my doors you dog you pretend to meddle with my marriage sirrah i obey but but me no buts be gone sir dare to ask me for money again refuse forty thousand pound out of my doors i say without reply exit charles enter servant one sir george airy inquires for you sir enter marplow running ha oh, gone is charles gone guardian yes and i desire your wise worship to walk after him nay egad i shall run i tell you but that ah oh, pox for the cashier for detaining me so long where the devil shall i find him now i shall certainly lose this secret exit hastily but is the fellow distracted desires sir george to walk up now for a trial of skill that will make me happy and him a fool <laughs> in my mind he looks like an ass already enter sir george well sir george do you hold in the same mind or would you capitulate <laughs> look here are the guineas chinks them <laughs> not if they were twice the sum sir francis therefore be brief call in the lady and take your post aside if she is a woman and not seduced by witchcraft to this old rogue i'll make his heart ache for if she has put but one grain of inclination about her i'll vary a thousand shapes but find it enter miranda agreed miranda there sir george try your fortune takes out his watch so from the eastern chambers breaks the sun dispels the clouds and gilds the vows below salutes her hold sir kissing was not in our agreement oh that's by way of prologue prithee old mammon to thy post well young timon tis now four exactly one hour remember is your utmost limit not a minute more retires to the bottom of the stage madam whether you will excuse or blame my love the author of this rash proceeding depends upon your pleasure as also the life of your admirer your sparkling eyes speak a heart susceptible of love your vivacity a soul too delicate to admit the embraces of decayed mortality miranda aside oh that i durst speak shake off this tyrant guardian's yoke assume yourself and dash his bold aspiring hopes the deity of his desires is avarice a heretic in love and ought to be banished by the queen of beauty see madam the faithful servant kneels and begs to be admitted in the number of your slaves miranda gives him her hand to raise him i wish i could hear what he says now running up hold 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 no palming that's contrary to articles death sir keep your distance or i'll write another article in your guts lays his hand to his sword sir francis going back a bloody-minded fellow not answer me perhaps she thinks my address too grave i'll be more free can you be so unconscionable madam to let me say all these fine things to you without one single compliment in return view me well am i not a proper handsome fellow ha huh? can you prefer that old dry withered sapless log of sixty-five 
to the vigorous gay sprightly love of twenty-four with snoring only he'll awake thee but i with ravishing delight would make thy senses dance in consort with the joyful minutes ha not yet sure she is dumb thus would i steal and touch thy beauteous hand takes hold of her hand till by degrees i reached thy snowy breasts then ravish kisses thus embraces her in ecstasy miranda struggles and flings from him aside oh heavens i shall not be able to contain myself sir francis running up his watch in his hand sure she did not speak to him there's three quarters of the hour gone sir george adad i don't like those close conferences more interruptions you'll have it sir lays his hand to his sword sir francis going back aside no no you shan't have her neither dumb still sure this old dog has enjoyed her silence i'll try another way i must conclude madam that in compliance to your guardian's humour you refuse to answer me consider the injustice of his injunction this single hour cost me a hundred pound and who'd you answer me i could purchase the twenty-four so however madam you must give me leave to make the best interpretation i can for my money and take the indication of your silence for the secret liking of my person therefore madam i will instruct you how to keep your word inviolate to sir francis and yet answer me to every question as for example when i ask anything to which you would reply in the affirmative gently nod your head thus and when in the negative thus shakes his head and in the doubtful a tender sigh thus ah. miranda aside how oh, every action charms me but i'll fit him for signs i warrant him sir francis aside ha 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 poor sir george ha 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 was it by his desire that you are dumb madam to all that i can say miranda nods very well she's tractable i find and is it possible that you can love him miranda nods miraculous pardon the bluntness of my questions for my time is short may i not hope to supplant him in your esteem miranda sighs good she answers me as i could wish you will not consent to marry him then miranda sighs how doubtful in that undone again hm. but that may proceed from his power to keep her out of her estate till twenty-five i'll try that come madam i cannot think you hesitate in this affair out of any motive but your fortune let him keep it till those few years are expired make me happy with your person let him enjoy your wealth miranda holds up her hands why what sign is that now nay nay madam except you observe my lesson i can't understand your meaning what a vengeance are they talking by signs and i may be fooled here what do you mean sir george to cut your throat if you dare mutter another syllable odd i wish you were fairly out of my house pray madam will you answer me to the purpose miranda shakes her head and points to sir francis what does she mean she won't answer me to the purpose or is she afraid yon old cuff should understand her signs ay it must be that i perceive madam that you are too apprehensive of the promise you have made to follow my rules therefore i'll suppose your mind an answer for you 
first for myself madam that i am in love with you is an infallible truth now for you turns on her side indeed sir and may i believe it as certainly madam is that tis daylight or that i die if you persist in silence bless me with the music of your voice and raise my spirit to their proper heaven thus low let me entreat ere i'm obliged to quit this place grant me some token of a favourable reception to keep my hopes alive arises hastily turns of her side rise sir and since my guardian's presence will not allow me privilege of tongue read that and rest assured you are not indifferent to me offers her a letter ha right woman she strikes it down but no matter i'll go on huh what's that a letter ha 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 thou art balked miranda aside the best assurance i ever saw ha huh, a letter oh let me kiss it with the same raptures that i would do the dear hand that touched it opens it now for a quick fancy in a long extempore what's here reads dear sir george this virgin muse i consecrate to you which when it has received the addition of your voice twill charm me into desire of liberty to love which you and only you can fix my angel oh you transport me kisses the letter and see the power of your command the god of love has set the verse already the flowing numbers dance into a tune and i am inspired with a voice to sing it miranda aside i'm sure thou art inspired with impudence enough sir george sings great love inspire him say i admire him give me the lover that can discover secret devotion from silent motion then don't betray me but hence convey me taking hold of miranda with all my heart this moment let's retire sir francis coming up hastily the hour is expired sir and you must take your leave there my girl there's the hundred pound which thou hast won go i'll be with you presently <laughs> exit miranda that's heart madam you won't leave me just in the nick will you ha 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 she has nicked you sir george i think ha 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 have you any more hundred pounds to throw away upon courtship ha 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 he 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 a curse of your fleering jests yet however i'll succeed i'll venture the same wager she does not value thee a spoonful of snuff nay more though you enjoyed her silence to me you'll never make her speak to the purpose with yourself ha 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 did i not tell thee thou wouldst repent thy money did i not say she hated young fellows ha 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 and i'm positive she's not in love with age ha <laughs> ha no matter for that ha <laughs> ha she is not taken with your youth nor your rhetoric to boot ha 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 whate'er her reason are for disliking amy i am certain that she can be taken with nothing about thee ha 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 how he swells with envy poor man poor man ha <laughs> ha i must beg your pardon sir george miranda will be impatient to have her share of mirth verily we shall laugh at thee most egregiously <laughs> with all my heart faith i shall laugh in my turn too for if you dare marry her old beelzebub you would be cuckled most egregiously remember that and tremble 
she that to age her beauteous self resigns shows witty management for close designs then if thou art graced with fair miranda's bed acton's horn she means shall crown thy head exit ha 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 he is mad these fluttering fops imagine they can wind turn and decoy to love all womankind but here's a proof of wisdom in my charge old men are constant young men live at large the frugal hand can bills at sight defray when he that lavish is has naught to pay exit scene changes to sir jealous traffic's house enter sir jealous is a binder patch following what in the balcony again notwithstanding my positive commands to the contrary why don't you write a bill upon your forehead to show passengers there's something to be let what harm can there be in a little fresh air sir is your constitution so hot mistress that it wants cooling huh apply the virtuous spanish rules banish your taste and thoughts of flesh feed upon roots and quench your thirst with water that and a close room would certainly make me die of the vapours no mistress tis your high-fed lusty rambling rampant ladies that are troubled with the vapours tis your ratifia persico cinnamon citron and spirit of clary cause such swimming in the brain that carries many a guinea full time to the doctor but you are not to be bred this way no galloping abroad no receiving visits at home for in our loose country the women are as dangerous as the men so i told her sir and that it was not decent to be seen in a balcony but she threatened to slap my chaps and told me i was her servant not her governess did she so but i'll make her to know that you are her duenna oh that incomparable custom of spain why here's no depending upon old women in my country for they are as wanton at eighty as a girl at eighteen and a man may as safely trust to asgill's translation as to his great-grandmother's not marrying again or to the spanish ladies veils and duenas for the safeguard of their honour dare to ridicule the cautious conduct of that wise nation and i'll have you locked up this fortnight without a peep-hole if we had but the ghostly helps in england which they have in spain i might deceive you if you did sir tis not the restraint but the innate principles secures the reputation and honour of our sex let me tell you sir confinement sharpens the invention as want of sight strengthens the other senses and is often more pernicious than the recreation innocent liberty allows say you so mistress who the devil taught you the art of reasoning i assure you they must have a greater faith than i pretend to that can think any woman innocent who requires liberty therefore patch to your charge i give her lock her up till i come back from change i shall have some sauntering coxcomb with nothing but a red coat and a feather think by leaping into her arms to leap into my estate but i'll prevent them 
she shall be only signor barbinetto's really sir i wish you would employ anybody else in this affair i lead a life like a dog with obeying your commands come madam will you please to be locked up isabella aside ay to enjoy more freedom than he is aware of exit with patch i believe that this wench is very true to my interest i am happy i met with her if i can but keep my daughter from being blown upon till signor babinetto arrives who shall marry her as soon as he comes and carry her to spain as soon as he has married her she has a pregnant wit and i'd no more have her an english wife than the grand seigneur's mistress exit enter whisper so i see sir jealous go out where shall i find mrs patch now enter patch oh mr whisper my lady saw you out at the window and ordered me to bid you fly and let your master know she's now alone hush speak softly i go i go but hark mrs patch shall not you and i have a little confabulation when my master and your lady is engaged ay ay farewell goes in and shuts the door re-enter sir jealous traffic meeting whisper sure whilst i was talking with mr treadwell i heard my door clap seeing whisper ah a man lurking about my house who do you want there sir want aside want a pox sir jealous what must i say now i want have you a letter or message for anybody there oh my conscience this is some hebald letter or message sir ay letter or message sir no not i sir sirrah sirrah i'll have you set in the stocks if you don't tell me your business immediately nay sir my business is no great matter of business neither and yet tis business of consequence too sirrah don't trifle with me trifle sir have you found him sir found what you rascal why trifle is the very lapdog my lady lost sir i fancied i see him run into this house i'm glad you have him sir my lady will be overjoyed that i have found him who is your lady friend my lady love puppy sir my lady love puppy then prithee carry thyself to her for i know no other whelp that belongs to her and let me catch ye no more puppy hunting about my doors lest i have you pressed into the service sirrah by no means sir your humble servant i must watch whether he goes or no before i can tell my master exit this fellow has the officious leer of a pimp and i half suspect a design but i'll be upon them before they think on me i warrant em exit scene charles's lodging enter charles and marplot honest marplot i thank thee for this supply i expect my lawyer with a thousand pound i've ordered him to take up and then you shall be repaid foo foo no more of that here comes sir george airy enter sir george cursedly out of humour at his disappointment see how he looks <laughs> ah charles i am so humbled in my pretensions to plots upon women that i believe i shall never have courage enough to attempt a chambermaid again i'll tell thee ha <laughs> ha i'll spare you the relation by telling you impatient to know your business with my father when i saw you enter i slipped back into the next room where i overheard every syllable that i said 
but i'll be hanged if you heard her answer but prithee tell me charles is she a fool i ne'er suspected her for one but marplot can inform you better if you'll allow him a judge a fool i'll justify she has more wit than all the rest of her sex put together why she'll rally me till i hate one word to say for myself a mighty proof of her wit truly there must be some trick in it sir george egad i'll find it out if it cost me the sum you paid for it do and command me enough let me alone to trace a secret enter whisper and speaks aside to his master the devil whisper here again that fellow never speaks out is this the same or a new secret sir george won't you ask charles what news whisper brings not i sir i suppose it does not relate to me lord lord how little curiosity some people have now my chief pleasure lies in knowing everybody's business i fancy charles thou hast some engagement upon thy hands i have a little business too marplot if it falls in your way to bring me any intelligence from miranda you'll find me at the thatched house at six you do me much honour you guess right sir george wish me success better than attended me adieu exit marplot you must excuse me nay nay what need of any excuse amongst friends i'll go with you indeed you must not uh, no then i suppose tis a duel and i will go to secure ye secure me why you won't fight what then i can call people to part ye well but it is no duel consequently no danger therefore prithee be answered what is a mistress then hmm you know i can be silent upon occasion i wish you could be civil too i tell you you neither must nor shall go with me farewell exit why then i must and will follow you exit end of act two Act Three of *The Busybody* by Susanna Sanslivre. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act the Third. Enter Charles. Well, here's the house which holds the lovely prize, quiet and serene. Here, no noisy footmen throng to tell the world that beauty dwells within no ceremonious visit makes the lover wait no rival to give my heart a pang who would not scale the window at midnight without fear of the jealous father's pistol rather than fill up the train of a coquette where every minute he is jostled out of place knock softly mrs patch mrs patch enter patch oh are you come sir all safe so in in then enter marplow there he goes who the devil lives here except i can find out that i am as far from knowing his business as ever gad i'll watch it may be a body house and he may have his throat cut if there should be any mischief i can make oath he went in well charles in spite of your endeavour to keep me out of the secret i may save your life for aught i know at that corner i'll plant myself there i shall see whoever goes in or comes out Gad, i love discoveries exit scene draws charles is a binder and patch patch look out sharp have a care of dad i warrant you exit well sir if i may judge your love by your courage i ought to believe you sincere for you venture into the lion's den when you come to see me 
if you'd consent whilst the furious beast is abroad i'd free you from the reach of his paws that would be but to avoid one danger by running into another like the poor wretches who fly the burning ship and meet their fate in the water come come charles i fear if i consult my reason confinement and plenty is better than liberty and starving i know you'd make the frolic pleasing for a little time by saying and doing a world of tender things but when our small substance is once exhausted and a thousand requisites for life are wanting love who rarely dwells with poverty would also fail us faith i fancy not methinks my heart is laid up a stock will last for life to back which i've taken a thousand pound upon my uncle's estate that surely will support us till one of our fathers relent there's no trusting to that my friend i doubt your father will carry his humour to the grave and mine till he sees me settled in spain and can ye then cruelly resolve to stay till that cursed don arrives and suffer that youth beauty fire and wit to be sacrificed to the arms of a dull spaniard to be immured and forbid the sight of anything that's humane no when it comes to the extremity and no stratagem can relieve us thou shalt list for a soldier and i'll carry thy knapsack after thee bravely resolved the world cannot be more savage than our parents and fortune generally assists the bold therefore consent now why should we put it to a future hazard who knows when we shall have another opportunity oh you have your ladder of ropes i suppose and the closet window stands just where it did and if you hadn't forgot to write in characters patch will find a way for our assignations thus much of the spanish contrivance my father's severity has taught me i thank him though i hate the nation i admire their management in these affairs enter patch oh madam i see my master coming up the street oh the devil would i had my ladder now i thought you had not expected him till night why 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 what shall i do madam oh for heaven's sake don't go that way you'll meet him full in the teeth oh unlucky moment ad's heart can you shut me into no cupboard ram me into no chest ta impossible sir he searches every hole in the house undone for ever if he sees you i shall never see you more i have thought on it run you to your chamber madam and sir come you along with me i'm certain you may easily get down from the balcony my life adieu lead on guide exit heaven preserve him exit scene changes to the street enter sir jealous with marplo behind him i don't know what's the matter but i have a strong suspicion all is not right within that fellow's sauntering about my door and his tail of a puppy had the face of a lie methought by santiago if i should find a man in the house i'd make mincemeat of him ah poor charles huh he can't he is old i fancy i might bully him and make charles have an opinion of my courage my own key shall let me in i'll give them no warning feeling for his key marplo going up to sir jealous what's that you say sir sir jealous turns quick upon him what's that to you sir why tis to me sir for the gentleman you threaten is a very honest gentleman look to it for if he comes not as safe out of your house as he went in i have half a dozen myrmidons hard by that shall beat it about your ears 
went in what is he in then ah a combination to undo me i'll murmur on you yet dog you thieves thieves beats marplow all this while he cries thieves murder murder ha, i was not in your house sir enter servant what's the matter sir the matter rascals have you let a man into my house but i'll flee him alive follow me i'll not leave a mouse hole unsearched if i find him by santiago i'll equip him for the opera exit a deuce of his cane there's no trusting to age what shall i do to relieve charles Began. i'll raise the neighbourhood murder murder charles drops down upon him from the balcony charles faith i'm glad to see thee safe out with all my heart a pox of your bawling how the devil came you here here gad i have done you a piece of service i told the old thunderbolt that the gentleman that was gone in was was it you that told him sir laying hold of him s death i could crush thee into atoms exit charles what will you choke me for my kindness will my inquiring soul never leave searching into other people's affairs till it gets squeezed out of my body i dare not follow him now for my blood he's in such a passion i'll go to miranda and if i can discover aught that may oblige sir george it may be a means to reconcile me again to charles exit enter sir jealous and servants are you sure you have searched everywhere yes from the top of the house to the bottom under the beds over the beds yes and in them too but found no body sir why what could this rogue mean enter isabinder and patch patch aside to isabinder take courage madam i saw him safe out bless me what's the matter sir you know best pray where's the man that was here just now what man sir i saw none nor i by the trust you repose in me do you think i would let a man come within these doors when you were absent ah patch she may be too cunning for thy honesty the very scout that he has set to give warning discovered it to me and threatened me with half a dozen myrmidons but i think i mauled the villain these afflictions you draw upon me mistress pardon me sir tis your own ridiculous humour draws you into these vexations and gives every fool pretence to banter you no tis your idle conduct your coquettish flirting into the balcony oh with what joy shall i resign thee into the arms of don diego babinetto is a binder aside and with what industry shall i avoid him certainly that rogue had a message from some body or other but being balked by my coming pop that sham upon me come along ye sots let's see if we can find the dog again patch lock her up do you hear exit with servants yes sir ay walk till your heels ache you'll find nobody i promise you who could that scout be which he talks of nay i can't imagine without it was whisper well dear patch let's employ all our thoughts how to escape this horrid don diego my very heart sinks at his terrible name fear not madam don carlos shall be the man or i'll lose the reputation of contriving 
and then what's a chambermaid good for sayst thou so my girl then let dad be jealous multiply his cares while love instructs me to avoid the snares i'll spite of all his spanish caution show how much for love a british maid can do exit scene sir francis gripe's house sir francis and miranda meeting well guardy how did i perform my dumb scene to admiration <laughs> thou dear little rogue let me bust thee for it nay adod i will charge ye so muzzle and tuzzle and hug thee i will i faith i will hugging and kissing her nay guardy don't be so lavish who would ride post when the journey lasts for life ah wag ah wag i'll bust thee again for that miranda aside Fah, how he stinks of tobacco what a delicate bedfellow i should have oh i'm transported when when my dear will thou convince the world of thy happy day when shall we marry huh there's nothing wanting but your consent sir francis my consent what does my charmer mean nay tis only a whim but i'll have everything according to form therefore when you sign an authentic paper drawn up by an able lawyer that i have your leave to marry the next day makes me yours, Guardy. <laughs> a whim indeed. Why is it not demonstration I give my leave when I marry thee? Not for your reputation, Guardy. The malicious world will be apt to say you tricked me into marriage, and so take the merit from my choice. Now I will have the act my own, to let the idle fops see how much I prefer a man loaded with years and wisdom. <laughs> prithee leave out years chargy i'm not so old as thou shalt find a dot i'm young there's a caper for ye jumps oh never excuse it why i like you the better for being old but i shall suspect you don't love me if you refuse me this formality not love thee chargy a dot i do love thee better than 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 better than what shall i say he got better than money i faith i do miranda aside that's false i'm sure to prove it do this then well i will do it chargy provided i bring a license at the same time ay and a parson too if you please <laughs> i can't help laughing to think how all the young coxcombs about town will be mortified when they hear of our marriage so they will so they will <laughs> well i fancy i shall be so happy with my guardy if wearing pearls and jewels or eating gold as the old saying is can make thee happy thou shalt be so my sweetest my lovely my charming my verily i know not what to call thee you must know guardy that i am so eager to have this business concluded that i've employed my woman's brother who is a lawyer in the temple to settle matters just to your liking you are to give your consent to my marriage which is to yourself you know but mum you must take up notice of that so then i will that is with your leave put my writings into his hands then to-morrow we come slap upon them with a wedding that nobody thought on by which you seize me and my estate and i suppose make a bonfire of your own act and deed nay but charge ye if nay guardy no ifs have i refused three northern lords two british peers and half a score knights to have you put in your ifs so thou hast indeed and i will trust to thy management but i'm all of a fire tis a wonder the dry stubble does not blaze enter marplow how now who sent for you sir what's the hundred pound gone already uh, no sir i don't want money now no that's a miracle but there's one thing you want i'm sure ay what's that guardian 
Manners. What, had I no servants without? None that could do my business, guardian, which is at present with this lady. With me, Mr. Marplot? What is it, I beseech you? Ay, sir, what is it? Anything that relates to her may be delivered to me. I deny that. That's more than I do, sir. Indeed, madam, why then to proceed? Fame says that you and my most conscionable guardian here designed, contrived, plotted, and agreed to choose a very civil, honorable, honest gentleman out of a hundred pound. That I contrived it. I, you. You never said a word against it. So far you are guilty. Pray tell that civil, honorable, honest gentleman that if he has any more such sums to fool away, they shall be received like the last. Ha, 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 Choust, quotha. But hark ye, let him know at the same time that if he dare to report I tricked him of it, I shall recommend a lawyer to him, shall show him a trick for twice as much. Do you hear? Tell him that. So, and this is the way you use a gentleman and your friend? Is the wretch thy friend? The wretch? Look ye, madam, don't call names. He can't. I won't take it. Why, you won't beat me, will you? <laughs> I don't know whether I will or no. Sir, I shall make a servant show you out at the window if you are saucy. I am your most humble servant, guardian. I design to go out the same way I came in. I would only ask this lady, if she do not think in her soul, Sir George Airy is not a fine gentleman. He dresses well. Which is chiefly owing to his tailor and valet de chamber. And if you allow that a proof of his being a fine gentleman, he is so. The judicious part of the world allow him wit, courage, gallantry, and management. Though I think he forfeited that character when he flung away a hundred pounds upon your dumb ladyship. Does that gall him? <laughs> so Sir George remaining in deep discontent has sent you, his trusty squire, to utter his complaint? <laughs> Yes, madam, and you, like a cruel, hard-hearted Jew, value it no more than I would your ladyship, were I, Sir George, you, you, you. Oh, don't call names. I know you love to be employed, and I'll oblige you, and you shall carry him a message from me. According as I like it. What is it? Nay, a kind one, you may be sure. First tell him... I have chose this gentleman to have and to hold, and so forth. Clapping her hand into Sir Francis's. Sir Francis aside. Oh, the dear rogue, how I dote on her. And advise his impertinence to trouble me no more, for I prefer Sir Francis for a husband before all the fops in the universe. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. She's bewitched, that's certain. Here's a husband for eighteen. Here's a shape. Here's bones rattling in a leathern bag. Turning Sir Francis about. Here's buckram and canvas to scrub you to repentance. Sirrah, my cane shall teach you repentance presently. No, Faith. I have felt its twin brother from just such a withered hand too lately. One thing more. Advise him to keep from the garden gate on the left hand... For if he dares to saunter there, about the hour of eight, as he used to do, he shall be saluted with a pistol or a blunderbuss. Oh, monstrous! Why, Chargy, did he use to come to the garden gate? The gardener described just such another man that always watched his coming out, and fain would have bribed him for his entrance. Tell him he shall find a warm reception if he comes this night. Pistols and blunderbusses. Egad, a warm reception indeed. I shall take care to inform him of your kindness and advise him to keep further off. Miranda aside. I hope he will understand my meaning better than to follow your advice. Thou hast signed, sealed, and taken possession of my heart for ever, Chargy. Ha, 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 And for you, Mr. Saucebox, let me have no more of your messages if ever you design to inherit your estate, gentlemen. Why, there tis now. 
Sure, I may be out of your clutches one day. Well, guardian, I say no more. But if you be not as errant a cuckold, as e'er drove bargain upon the exchange, or paid attendance to a court, I am the son of a whetstone, and so your humble servant. Exit. Don't forget the message. <laughs> I am so provoked. Tis well he's gone. Oh, mind him not, guardy. But let's sign the articles, and then... And then, <laughs> Dodd, I believe I am metamorphosed. My pulse beats high and my blood boils, methinks. Kissing and hugging her. Oh, fie, guardy, be not so violent. Consider the market lasts all the year. Well, I'll in and see if the lawyer be come. You follow. Exit. Ay, to the world's end, my dear. Well, Frank, thou art a lucky fellow in thy old age to have such a delicate morsel and thirty thousand pound in love with thee. I shall be the envy of bachelors, the glory of married men, and the wonder of the town. Some guardians would be glad to compound for part of the estate at dispatching an heiress, but I engross the whole. Oh, mihi pretoritos referetsi Jupiter annos. Exit. Scene changes to a tavern, discovers Sir George and Charles with wine before them, and whisper waiting. Nay, prithee don't be grave, Charles. Misfortunes will happen. <laughs> Tis some comfort to have a companion in our sufferings. I am only apprehensive for Isabinda. Her father's humour is implacable, and how far his jealousy may transport him to her undoing shocks my soul to think but since you escaped undiscovered by him his rage will quickly lash into a calm never fear it but who knows what that unlucky dog marplot told him nor can i imagine what brought him thither that fellow is ever doing mischief and yet to give him his due he never designs it this is some blundering adventure wherein he thought to show his friendship as he calls it a curse on him then you must forgive him what said he said nay i had more mind to cut his throat than hear his excuses where is he sir i saw him go into sir francis scrape's just now oh then he is upon your business sir george a thousand to one but he makes some mistake there too impossible without he huffs the lady and makes love to sir francis enter drawer mr marplot is below gentlemen and desires to know if he may have leave to wait upon ye how civil the rogue is when he has done a fault ho oh, desire him to walk up prithee charles throw off this chagrin and be good company nay hang him i'm not angry with him whisper fetch me pen ink and paper yes sir exit whisper enter marlow do but mark his sheepish look sir george dear charles don't overwhelm a man already under insupportable affliction i'm sure i always intend to serve my friends but if my malicious stars deny the happiness is the fault mine never mind him mr marplot he's eat up with spleen but tell me what says miranda says nay we are all undone there too i told you so nothing prospers that he undertakes why can i help her having choose your father for better for worse so there's another of fortune's strokes i suppose i shall be edged out of my estate with twins every year let who will get em what is the woman really possessed yes with a spirit of contradiction she railed at you most prodigiously that's no ill sign enter whisper with pen ink and paper you'd say it was no good sign if you knew all why prithee harky sir george let me warn you pursue your old haunt no more it may be dangerous charles sits down to write my old haunt what do you mean 
why in short then since you will have it miranda vows if you dare approach the garden gate at eight o'clock as you used you shall be saluted with a blunderbuss sir those were her words nay she bid me to tell you so too <laughs> the garden gate at eight as i used to do there must be a meaning in this is there such a gate charles yes yes it opens into the park i suppose her ladyship has made many a scamper through it it must be an assignation then ha ah, my heart springs with joy tis a propitious omen my dear marplot let me embrace thee thou art my friend my better angel what do you mean sir george uh, no matter what i mean here take a bumper to the garden gate you dear rogue you you have reason to be transported sir george i have saved your life my life thou hast saved my soul man charles if thou dost not pledge this health mayst thou never taste the joys of love whisper be sure to take care how you deliver this gives him the letter bring me the answer to my lodgings i warrant you sir exit whither does that letter go now dare i not ask for my blood now i'm for you to the garden gate at the hour of eight charles along huzza i begin to conceive you that's more than i do ye gad to the garden gate huzza drinks but i hope you design to keep far enough off on sir george ay ay never fear that she shall see i despise her frowns let her use her blunderbuss against the next fool she shan't reach me with the smoke i warrant her <laughs> ah charles if you could receive a disappointment thus on cavalier one should have some comfort in being beat for you the fool comprehends nothing nor would i have him prithee take him along with thee enough marplot you shall go home with me i'm glad i'm well with him however sir george yours egad charles asking me to go home with him gives me a shrewd suspicion that there's more in the garden gate than i comprehend faith i'll give him the drop and away to guardians and find it out i kiss both your hands and now for the garden gate its beauty gives the assignation there and love too powerful grows to admit of fear exit end of act three Act Four of *The Busybody* by Susanna Sans Livre. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act the Fourth. Scene: The outside of Sir Jealous Traffic's house. Patch peeping out of door. Enter Whisper. Ha, Mrs. Patch this is a lucky minute to find you so readily my master dies with impatience my lady imagined so and by her orders i have been scouting this hour in search of you to inform you that sir chalice has invited some friends to supper with him to-night which gives an opportunity to your master to make use of his ladder of robes the closet window shall be open and isabinda ready to receive him bid him come immediately excellent he'll not disappoint i warrant him but hold i have a letter here which i am to carry an answer of i can't think what language the direction is so tis no language but a character which the lovers invented to avert discovery ha! i hear my old master coming downstairs it is impossible you should have an answer away and bid him come himself for that be gone we are ruined if you're seen for he has doubled his care since the last accident i go i go exit there go thou into my pocket puts it besides and it falls down now i'll up the back stairs lest i meet him well 
a dexterous chambermaid is the lady's best utensil i say exit enter sir jealous with a letter in his hand so this is some comfort this tells me that signor don diego babinetto is safely arrived he shall marry my daughter the minute he comes ah what's here takes up the letter patch dropped a letter i don't know what to make of the superscription i'll see what's within side opens it hmm tis hebrew i think what can this mean there must be some trick in it this was certainly designed for my daughter but i don't know that she can speak any language but her mother tongue no matter for that this may be one of love's hieroglyphics and i fancy i saw patch's tail sweep by that wench may be a slut and instead of guarding my honour betray it i'll find it out i'm resolved who's there what answer did you bring from the gentleman i sent you to invite that they'd all wait of you sir as i told you before but i suppose you forget sir did i so sir but i shan't forget to break your head if any of em come sir come sir why did you not send me to desire their company sir but i send you now to desire their absence say i have something extraordinary fallen out which calls me abroad contrary to expectation and ask their pardon and you hear send the butler to me yes sir exit if this paper has a meaning i'll find it enter butler lay the cloth in my daughter's chamber and bid the cook send supper thither presently yes sir heyday what's the matter now exit he wants the eyes of argus that has a young handsome daughter in this town but my comfort is i shall not be troubled long with her he that pretends to rule a girl once in her teens had better be at sea in a storm and would be in less danger for let him do or counsel all he can she thinks and dreams of nothing else but man exit scene is a binder's chamber is a binder and patch are you sure nobody saw you speak to whisper yes very sure madam but i heard sir jealous coming downstairs so i clapped this letter into my pocket feels for the letter a letter give it me quickly <gasps> bless me what's become on it i'm sure i put it searching still is it possible thou couldst be so careless oh i'm undone for ever if it be lost i must have dropped it upon the stairs but why are you so much alarmed if the worst happens nobody can read it madam nor find out whom it was designed for if it falls into my father's hands the very figure of a letter will produce ill consequences run and look for it upon the stairs this moment nay i'm sure it can be nowhere else as she's going out the door meets the butler how now what do you want my master ordered me to lay the cloth here for his supper is a binder aside ruin past redemption you mistake sure what shall we do i thought he expected company to-night oh poor charles oh unfortunate isabinda i thought so too madam 
but I suppose he has altered his mind. Lays the cloth and exit. The letter is the cause. This heedless action has undone me. <gasps> Fly and fasten the closet window which will give Charles notice to retire. Ha, my father. Oh, confusion. Enter Sir Jealous. Hold, hold, Patch. Whither are you going? I'll have nobody stir out of the room till after supper. Sir, I was only going to reach your easy chair. A wretched accident. I'll have nobody stir out of the room. I don't want my easy chair. Is a binder aside. What will be the event of this? Hark ye, daughter, do you know this hand? As I suspected. Hand, do you call it, sir? Tis some schoolboy's scrawl. Patch aside. O oh, invention, thou chambermaid's best friend, assist me. Are you sure you don't understand it? Patch feels in her bosom and shakes her coats. Do you understand it, sir? I wish I did. Is a binder aside. Thank heaven you do not. Then I know no more of it than you do indeed, sir. Oh, Lord! Oh, Lord, what have you done, sir? Why, the paper is mine. I dropped it out of my bosom. Snatching it from him. Ah, yours, mistress. Is a binder aside. What does she mean by owning it? Yes, sir, it is. What is it? Speak. Why, sir, it is a charm for the toothache. I have worn it this seven year. Twas given me by an angel for aught I know when I was raving with the pain, for nobody knew from whence he came nor whither he went. He charged me never to open it, lest some dire vengeance befall me, and heaven knows what will be the event. Oh, cruel misfortune that I should drop it and you should open it, if you had not opened it. Is a binder aside. Excellent wench! Pox of your charms and whims for me. If that be all, tis well enough. There, there, burn it, and I warrant you no vengeance will follow. Patch aside. Phew, so that's all right again thus far. Is a binder aside. I would not lose Patch for the world. I'll take courage a little. Is this usage for your daughter, sir? Must my virtue and conduct be suspected? For every trifle, you immure me like some dire offender here, and deny me all recreations which my sex enjoy, and the custom of the country and modesty allow. Yet not content with that, you make my confinement more intolerable by your mistrusts and jealousies. Would I were dead, so I were free from this. <laughs> Weeps. Tomorrow rids you of this tiresome load. Don Diego Babinetto will be here, and then my care ends and his begins. Is a binder aside. Is he come then? Oh, how shall I avoid this hated marriage? Enter servants with supper. Come, will you sit down? I can't eat, sir. Patch aside. No, I dare swear he has given her supper enough. I wish I could get into the closet. Well, if you can't eat, then give me a song whilst I do. <laughs> I have such a cold. I can scarce speak, sir. Much less sing. 
aside. How shall I prevent Charles coming in? I hope you have the use of your fingers, madam. Play a tune upon your spinet whilst your woman sings me a song. Patch aside. I'm as much out of tune as my lady, if he knew all. <laughs> I shall make excellent music. Sits down to play. Really, sir, I'm so frightened about your opening this charm that I can't remember one song. Pish, hang your charm. Come, come, sing anything. Patch aside. Yes, I'm likely to sing truly. <coughs> Bless me, sir, I cannot raise my voice. My heart pants so. Why, what does your heart pant so that you can't play neither? Pray, what key are you in, huh? Patch aside. Oh, would the key was turned off you once. Why don't you sing, I say? When madam has put her spinet in tune, sir. <coughs> I cannot play, sir. Whatever ails me. Rising. Sounds sit down and play me a tune, or I'll break the spinet about your ears. <laughs> what will become of me? Sits down and plays. Sir Jealous to Patch. Come, mistress. Yes, sir. Sings, but horribly out of tune. Hey, hey, why are you at top of the house and you down in the cellar? What's the meaning of this? Is it on purpose to cross me, huh? Pray, madam, take it a little lower. I cannot reach that note, nor any note, I fear. Well, begin. Aside. Oh, Pat, we shall be discovered. I sink with the apprehension, madam. <coughs> Sings. Charles pulls open the closet door. Music and singing, tis thus the bright celestial court above beguiles the hours with music and with love. Death, her father there. <gasps> the women shriek. Then I must fly. Exit into the closet. Sir Jealous rises up hastily, seeing Charles slip back into the closet. Hell and furies, a man in the closet. Oh, a ghost, a ghost. He must not enter the closet. Isabinda throws herself down before the closet door as in a sound. The devil, I'll make a ghost of him, I warrant you. Strives to get by. Oh, hold, sir, have a care, you'll tread upon my lady. Who waits there? Bring some water. Oh, this comes of your opening the charm. Oh, 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 oh. I'll charm you, housewife. Here lies the charm that's conjured this fellow in, I'm sure, aunt. Come out, you rascal. Do so. Zounds, take her from the door or spurn her from it and break your neck down the stairs. Oh, oh. Where am I? Aside to Patch. He's gone. I heard him leap down. Nay, then let him enter. Here, here, madam, smell to this. Come, give me your hand. Come nearer to the window. The air will do you good. I would she were in her grave. Where are you, sirrah? Villain, robber of my honour. I'll pull you out of your nest goes into the closet you'll be mistaken old gentleman the bird is flown i'm glad i have escaped so well i was almost dead in earnest with the fright re-enter sir jealous out of the closet whoever the dog were he has escaped out the window for the sash is up but though he's got out of my reach you are not 
and first mrs pander with your charms for toothache get out of my house go troop yet hold stay i'll see you out of doors myself but i'll secure your charge ere i go what do you mean sir was she not a creature of your own providing she was of the devil's providing for aught i know what have i done sir to merit your displeasure i don't know which of you have done it but you shall both suffer for it till i can discover whose guilt it is go get in there i'll move you from this side of the house pushes is a binder in at the other door and locks it puts the key in his pocket i'll keep the key myself i'll try what ghost will get into that room and now forsooth i'll wait on you downstairs oh my poor lady downstairs sir but i won't go out sir till i have looked up my clothes if thou wert as naked as thou wert born thou shouldst not stay to put on a smock come along i say when your mistress is married you shall have your rags and everything that belongs to you but till then exit pulling her out oh barbarous usage for nothing re-enter at the lower door there go and come no more within sight of my habitation these three days i charge you slaps the door after her did ever anybody see such an old monster enter charles oh mr charles your affairs and mine are in an ill posture i am immured to the frowns of fortune but what has befallen thee sir jealous whose suspicious nature is always on the watch nay even whilst one eye sleeps the other keeps sentinel upon sight of you flew into such a violent passion that i couldn't find no stratagem to appease him but in spite of all arguments locked his daughter into his own apartment and turned me out of doors ha ah, oh isabinda and swears she shall neither see sun nor moon till she is don diego babinetto's wife who arrived last night and is expected with impatience he dies yes by all the wrongs of love he shall here will i plant myself and through my breast he shall make his passage if he enters a most heroic resolution there might be ways found out more to your advantage policy is often preferred to open force i apprehend you not what think you of personating this spaniard imposing upon the father and marrying your mistress by his own consent sayest thou so my angel oh could that be done my life to come would be too short to recompense thee but how can i do that when i neither know what ship he came in nor from what part of spain who recommends him nor how attended i can solve all this he is from madrid his father's name don pedro questo portento babinetto here's a letter of his to sir jealous which he dropped one day you understand spanish and the hand may be counterfeited you conceive me sir my better genius thou hast revived my drooping soul i'll about it instantly come to my lodgings and we'll concert matters exeunt scene a garden gate open sent well waiting within enter sir george airy so this is the gate and most invitingly open if there should be a blunderbuss here now what a dreadful ditty would my fall make for fools and but a jest for the wits how my name would be roared about streets well i'll venture all st st sir george airy enters a female voice thus far i'm safe my dear no i'm not your dear but i'll conduct you to her give me your hand you must go through many a dark passage and dirty step before you arrive i know i must before i arrive at paradise 
therefore be quick my charming guide for aught you know come come your hand and away hear here child you can't be half so swift as my desires exeunt scene the house enter miranda well let me reason a little with my mad self now don't i transgress all rules to venture upon a man without the advice of the grave and wise but then a rigid knavish guardian who would have married me to whom even to his nauseous self or nobody sir george is what i have tried in conversation inquired into his character am satisfied in both then his love who would have given a hundred pound only to have seen a woman he had not infinitely loved so i find my liking him has furnished me with arguments enough of his side and now the only doubt remains whether he will come or no enter sentwell that's resolved madam for here's the night exit sentwell and do i once more behold that lovely object whose idea fills my mind and forms my pleasing dreams what beginning again in heroics sir george don't you remember how little fruit your last prodigal oration produced not one single word in answer ha the voice of my incognita why did you take ten thousand ways to captivate a heart your eyes alone had vanquished prithee no more of these flights for our time's but short and we must fall into business do you think we can agree on the same terrible bugbear matrimony without heartily repenting on both sides it has been my wish since first my longing eyes beheld ye and your happy ears drank in the pleasing news i had thirty thousand pound unkind did i not offer you in those purchased minutes to run the risk of your fortune so you would but secure that lovely person to my arms well if you have such love and tenderness since our wooing has been short pray reserve it for our future days to let the world see we are lovers after wedlock twill be a novelty haste then and let us tie the knot and prove the envied pair hold not so fast i have provided better than to venture on dangerous experiments headlong my guardian trusting to my dissembled love has given up my fortune to my own dispose but with this proviso that he to-morrow morning weds me he is now gone to dr commons for a license ha ah, a license but i have planted emissaries that infallibly take him down to epsom under pretence that a brother usurer of his is to make him his executor the thing on earth he covets tis his known character now my instruments confirm him this man is dying and he sends me word he goes this minute it must be to-morrow ere he can be undeceived that time is ours let us improve it then and settle on our coming years endless endless happiness i dare not stir till i hear he's on the road then i and my writings the most material point are soon removed i have one favour to ask if it lies in your power you would be a friend to poor charles though the son of this tenacious man he is as free from all his vices as nature and a good education can make him and what now i have vanity enough to hope will induce you he is the man on earth i love i was never his enemy and only put on as it helped my design on his father if his uncle's estate ought to be in his possession which i shrewdly suspect i may do him a singular piece of service you are all goodness enter sentwell oh madam 
My master and Mr. Marplot are just coming into the house. Undone! Undone! If he finds you here in this crisis, all my plots are unraveled. What shall I do? Can't I get back into the garden? Oh, no! He comes up those stairs. Here, here, here! Can you condescend to stand behind this chimney board, Sir George? Anywhere, anywhere, dear madam, without ceremony. Come, come, sir, lie close. They put him behind the chimney board. Enter Sir Francis and Marplow, Sir Francis peeling an orange. I could not go, though tis upon life and death, without taking leave of dear Chargy. Besides, this fellow buzzed in my ears that thou mightst be so desperate to shoot that wild rake which haunts the garden gate, and that would bring us into trouble, dear. Miranda, frowning at Marplow, aside. So Marplot brought you back, then. I am obliged to him for that, I'm sure. Marplow, aside. By her looks, she means she is not obliged to me. I have done some mischief now, but what, I can't imagine. Well, Chargy, I have had three messengers to come to Epson to my neighbor's Squeezums, who, uh, for all his vast riches, is departing. Ah. See what all you usurers must come to? Peace, ye young knave. Some forty years hence I may think on it. But, Chargy, I'll be with thee to-morrow. Before those pretty eyes are open, I will, I will, Chargy, I'll rouse you, I saith. Here, Mrs. Sentwell, lift up your lady's chimney-board, that I may throw my peel in and not litter her chamber. Oh, my stars, what will become of us now? Oh, pray, sir, give it me. I love it above all things in nature, indeed I do. No, no, hussy. You have the green pip already. I'll have no more apothecary's bills goes towards the chimney. Hold, 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 dear Cardi. I have a, a, a monkey shut up there, and if you open it before the man comes that is to tame it, tis so wild, twill break all my china, or get away, and that would break my heart, for I am fond on it to distraction, next to thee, dear Cardi. Well, well, Chargy, I won't open it. Uh, she shall have her monkey, poor rogue. Here, throw this peel out of the window. Exit Sentwell. A monkey, dear madam, let me see it. I can tame a monkey as well as the best of them all. Oh, how I love the little miniatures of man. Be quiet, mischief, and stand farther from the chimney. You shall not see my monkey. Why, sure. Striving with him. For heaven's sake, dear madam, let me but peep to see if it be as pretty as my lady Fiddlefaddle's. Has it got a chain? Not yet, but I design it one shall last its lifetime. Nay, you shall not see it. Look, Guardy, how he teases me. Sir Francis getting between him and the chimney. Sirrah, sirrah, let my chargy's monkey alone, or Bambo shall fly about your ears. What is there no dealing with you? Pooh, pox of the monkey. Here's a rout. I wish he may rival you. Enter a servant. Sir, they put two more horses in the coach as you ordered, and tis ready at the door. Well, I'm going to be executor. Better for thee, Jewel. Bye, Chargy, one bus. I'm glad thou hast got a, a monkey to divert thee a little. Thank ye, dear Guardy. Nay. I'll see you to the coach. That's kind, Adod. Miranda to Marplow. Come along, impertinence. Marplow stepping back. Egad, I will see the monkey now. Lifts the board and discovers Sir George. Oh, Lord! Oh, Lord! Thieves! Thieves! Murderers! Dame, you unlucky dog! Tis I! Which way shall I get out? Show me instantly! or I'll cut your throat. Undone, undone, at that door there. But hold, hold, break that china, and I'll bring you off. He runs off at the corner and throws down some china. We enter Sir Francis, Miranda, and Sentwell. Mercy on me, what's the matter? Oh, you toad, what have you done? No great harm. 
I beg of you to forgive me. Longing to see the monkey, I did but just raise up the board, and it flew over my shoulders, scratched all my face, broke yon china, and whisked out of the window. Was ever such an unlucky rogue? Sirrah, I forbid you my house. Call the servants to get the monkey again. I would stay myself to look it, but that you know my earnest business. Oh, my lady will be the best to lure it back. All them creatures love my lady extremely. Go, go, dear Guardy. I hope I shall recover it. Bye-bye, dear. Ah, mischief, how you look now. Bye-bye. Exit. Sent well, see him in the coach, and bring me word. Yes, madam. So, sir, you have done your friend a signal piece of service, I suppose. Why, look you, madam. If I have committed a fault, thank yourself. No man is more serviceable when I am led into a secret, nor none more unlucky at finding it out. Who could divine your meaning when you talked of a blunderbuss who thought of a rendezvous? And when you talked of a monkey, who the devil dreamt of Sir George? A sign you converse but little with our sex when you can't reconcile contradictions. Enter Sentwell. He's gone, madam, as fast as the coach and six can carry him. Enter Sir George. Then I may appear. Dear Sir George, make my peace. On my soul, I did not think of you. I dare swear thou didst not. Madam, I beg you to forgive him. Well, Sir George, if he can be a secret. Odd's heart, madam. I'm as secret as a priest when I'm trusted. Why, it is with a priest our business is at present. Madam, here's Mistress Isabinda's woman to wait on you. Bring her up. Enter Patch. How do you do, Mrs. Patch? What news from your lady? That's for your private ear, madam. Sir George, there's a friend of yours has an urgent occasion for your assistance. His name? Charles. Ah. Then there is something afoot that I know nothing of. I'll wait on you, Sir George. A third person may not be proper, perhaps, as soon as I have dispatched my own affairs. I am at his service. I'll send my servant to tell him. I'll wait upon him in half an hour. How come you employed in this message, Mrs. Patch? Want of business, madam. I am discharged by my master, but hope to serve my lady still. How discharged? You must tell me the whole story within. With all my heart, madam. Marplow, aside. Pish, pox. I wish I were fairly out of the house. I find marriage is the end of this secret. And now I am half mad to know what Charles wants him for. Madam, I'm doubly pressed by love and friendship. This exigence admits of no delay. Shall we make marplots of the party? If you'll run the hazard, Sir George, I believe he means well. Nay, nay, for my part, I desire to be led into nothing. I'll be gone, therefore pray don't mistrust me. Going. So now has he a mind to be gone to Charles? but not knowing what affairs he may have upon his hands at present, I am resolved he shan't stir. No, Mr. Marplot, you must not leave us. We want a third person. Takes hold of him. I never had more mind to be gone in my life. Come along, then. If we fail in the voyage, thank yourself for taking this ill-starred gentleman on board. That vessel ne'er can unsuccessful prove, Whose freight is beauty, and whose pilot love. End of Act Four Act Five of The Busybody by Susanna Sans Livre This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, Please visit LibriVox.org. Act the Fifth. Enter Miranda, Patch, and Sentwell. Well, Patch, I have done a strange, bold thing. 
my fate is determined and expectation is no more now to avoid the impertinence and roguery of an old man i have thrown myself into the extravagance of a young one if he should despise slight or use me ill there is no remedy from a husband but the grave and that's a terrible sanctuary to one of my age and constitution oh fear not madam you'll find your account in sir george airy it is impossible a man of sense should use a woman ill endued with beauty wit and fortune it must be the lady's fault if she does not wear the unfashionable name of wife easy when nothing but complaisance and good humour is requisite on either side to make them happy i long till i am out of this house lest any accident should bring my guardian back sent well put my best jewels into the little casket slip them into thy pocket and let us march off to sir jealous's it shall be done madam exit sent well sir george will be impatient madam if their plot succeeds we shall be well received if not he will be able to protect us besides i long to know how my young lady fares farewell old mammam and thy detested walls twill be no more sweet sir francis i shall be compelled to the odious task of dissembling no longer to get my own and coax him with the wheedling names of my precious my dear dear guardy oh heavens enter sir francis behind ah my sweet chargy don't be frighted she starts but thy poor guardy has been abused cheated fooled betrayed but nobody knows by whom miranda aside undone past redemption what won't you speak to me chargy i'm so surprised with joy to see you i know not what to say poor dear girl but do we know that my son or some such rogue to rob or murder me or both contrived this journey for upon the road i met my neighbour squeeze em well and coming to town good lack good lack what tricks are there in this world enter sentwell with a diamond necklace in her hand not seeing sir francis madam be pleased to tie this necklace on for i can't get it into the seeing sir francis the wench is a fool i think could you not have carried it to be mended without putting it in the box what's the matter only dear i bid her i bid her your ill usage has put everything out of my head won't you go guardy and find out these fellows and have them punished and and where should i look them child no i'll sit me down contented with my safety nor stir out of my own doors till i go with thee to a parson miranda aside if he goes into his closet i am ruined oh bless me in this fright i had forgot mrs patch ay madam and i stay for your speedy answer miranda aside i must get him out of the house now assist me fortune mrs patch i profess i did not see you how dost thou do mrs patch well don't you repent leaving my chargy yes everybody must love her but i came now aside to miranda madam what did i come for my invention is at the last ebb nay never whisper tell me she came dear guardy to invite me to her lady's wedding and you shall go with me guardy tis to be done this moment to a spanish merchant old sir jealous keeps on his humour the first minute he sees her the next he marries her <laughs> i'd go if i thought the sight of matrimony would tempt chargy to perform her promise there was a smile there was a consenting look with those pretty twinklers worth a million odds precious i am happier than the great mogul the emperor of china or all the potentates that are not in wars speak confirm it make me leap out of my skin when one has resolved tis in vain to stand shall i shall i if ever i marry positively this is my wedding day oh happy happy man verily i will beget a son the first night shall disinherit that dog charles i have estate enough to purchase a barony 
and be the immortalizing the whole family of the grapes come then guardy give me thy hand let's to this house of hymen my choice is fixed let good or ill betide the joyful bridegroom i and i the happy bride exeunt enter sir jealous meeting a servant sir here's a couple gentlemen inquire for you one of them calls himself signor diego babinetto ah signor babinetto admit em instantly joyful minute i'll have my daughter married to-night enter charles in spanish habit with sir george dressed like a merchant signor vezo las manos vuestra mercred y muy bien venido en estra terra signor soy muy humilde y muy obligado creado de vuestro merced mi padre envia a vuestra merced los más profundos de sus respetos y a comisionado esta mercadel inglés de conclure un negocio qui mi haza el más de choso hombre del mundo haciendo me su yerno i am glad aunt for i find i have lost much of my spanish sir i am your most humble servant senor don diego babinetto has informed me that you are commissioned by senor don pedro etc his worthy father to see an affair of marriage consummated between a daughter of yours and senor diego babinetto his son here true sir such a trust is reposed in me as that letter will inform you aside i hope twill pass upon him gives him a letter ay tis his hand seems to read good aside to charles you have counterfeited to a nicety charles if the whole plot succeeds as well i'm happy sir i find by this that you are a man of honour and probity i think sir he calls you meanwell meanwell is my name sir a very good name and very significant charles aside yes faith if he knew all for to mean well is to be honest and to be honest is the virtue of a friend and a friend is the delight and support of human society you shall find that i'll discharge the part of a friend in what i have undertaken sir jealous charles aside but little does he think to whom therefore sir i must entreat the presence of your fair daughter and the assistance of your chaplain for senor don pedro strictly enjoined me to see the marriage rites performed as soon as we should arrive to avoid the accidental overtures of venus overtures of venus ay sir that is those little hawking females that traverse the park and the playhouse to put off their damaged wear they fasten upon foreigners like leeches and watch their arrival as carefully as the kentish men do a shipwreck i warrant you they have heard of him already nay i know this town swarms with them ay and then you know the spaniards are naturally amorous but very constant the first face fixes em and it may be dangerous to let him ramble ere he is tied charles aside well hinted pat to my purpose well sir there is but one thing more and they shall be married instantly charles aside pray heaven that one thing more 
don't spoil all don pedro writ me a word in his last but one that he designed the sum of five thousand crowns by way of jointure for my daughter and that it should be paid into my hand upon the day of marriage charles aside oh the devil in order to lodge it in some of our funds in case she should become a widow and return for england sir george aside pox on it this is an unlucky turn what shall i say and he does not mention one word of it in this letter charles aside i don't know how he should <laughs> True sir jealous he told me such a thing but 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 he 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 did not imagine that you would insist upon the very day for 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 money you know is dangerous returning by sea and 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 charles aside to sir george zounds say we have brought it in commodities and so sir he has sent it in merchandise tobacco sugars spices limons and so forth which shall be turned into money with all expedition in the meantime sir if you please to accept of my bond for performance it is enough sir i am so pleased with the countenance of senor diego and the harmony of your name that i'll take your word and will fetch my daughter this moment within there enter servant desire mr tackham my neighbour's chaplain to walk hither yes sir exit gentlemen i'll return in an instant exit wondrous well let me embrace thee egad that five thousand pound had like to have ruined the plot but that's over and if fortune throws no more rubs in our way thou'lt carry the prize but hist here he comes enter sir jealous dragging in is a binder come along you stubborn baggage you come along oh hear me sir hear me but speak one word do not destroy my everlasting peace my soul abhors this spaniard you have chose nor can i wed him without being cursed how's that let this posture move your tender nature kneels forever will i hang upon these knees nor loose my hands till you cut off my hold if you refuse to hear me sir charles aside oh that i could discover myself to her sir george aside have a care what you do you had better trust to his obstinacy did you ever see such a perverse slut off i say mr meanwell pray help me a little rise madam and do not disoblige your father who has provided a husband worthy of you one that will love you equal with his soul and one that you will love when once you know him oh, never never could i suspect that falsehood in my heart i would this moment tear it from my breast and straight present him with the treacherous part charles aside oh my charming faithful dear falsehood why who the devil are you in love with huh. 
don't provoke me for by santiago i shall beat you housewife charles aside heaven forbid for i shall infallibly discover myself if he should have patience madam and look at him why will you prepossess yourself against a man that is master of all the charms you would desire in a husband ay look at him isabinda senor pasabinda de lanta my heart bleeds to see her grieve whom i imagined would with joy receive me signora oblige me vuestra merced de sumano sir jealous pulling up her head hold up your head hold up your head housewife and look at him is there a proper handsomer better shaped fellow in england ye jade you ah see see the obstinate baggage shuts her eyes by santiago i have a good mind to beat her out pushes her down do then sir kill me kill me instantly tis much the kinder action of the two for it will be worse than death to wed him sir jealous you are too passionate give me leave i'll try by gentle words to work her to your purpose i pray do mr meanwhile i pray do she'll break my heart weeps there is in that jewels of the value of three thousand livres which were her mother's and a paper wherein i have settled one half of my estate upon her now and the whole when i die but provided she marries this gentleman else by santiago i'll turn her out of doors to beg or starve tell her this mr meanwell pray do walks off ha this is beyond expectation trust to me sir i'll lay the dangerous consequence of disobeying you at this juncture before her i warrant you charles aside a sudden joy runs through my heart like a propitious omen come madam do not blindly cast your life away just in the moment you would wish to have it pray cease your trouble sir i have no wish but sudden death to free me from this hated spaniard if you are his friend inform him what i say my heart is given to another youth whom i love with the same strength of passion that i hate this diego with whom if i am forced to wed my own hand shall cut the gordian knot suppose the spaniard which you strive to shun should be the very man to whom you'd fly ha huh. would you not blame your rash result and curse those eyes that would not look on charles on charles oh you have inspired new life and collected every wandering sense where is he oh let me fly into his arms rises hold 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 to death madam you'll ruin all your father believes him to be senor barbonetto compose yourself a little pray madam he runs to sir jealous charles aside her eyes declare she knows me she begins to hear reason sir the fear of being turned out of doors has done it runs back to his abinder tis he oh my ravished soul take heed madam you don't betray yourself seem with reluctance to consent or you are undone 
runs to Sir Jealous. Speak gently to her, sir. I'm sure she'll yield. I see it in her face. Well, Isabinda, can you refuse the bless of father whose only care is to make you happy, as Mr. Meanwell has informed you? Come, wipe your eyes. Nay, prithee do, or thou wilt break thy father's heart. See, thou bring'st the tears in mine, to think of thy undutiful carriage to me. Weeps. Oh, do not weep, sir. Your tears are like a poniard to my soul. Do with me what you please. I am all obedience. Um, then thou art my child again. Tis done, and now friend the days thine own. The happiest of my life, if nothing intervene. And wilt thou love him? I will endeavour it, sir. Enter servant. Sir, here is Mr. Tackham. Show him into the parlour. Senor, tome vin su epera, sete momenta le junta les manos. Gives her to Charles. O oh, transport, Senor yo la recibo como de se deva un tesoro tan grande. O oh, my joy, my life, my soul. Embrace. My faithful, everlasting comfort. And now, Mr. Meanwell, let's to the parson, who by his art will join this pair for life, make me the happiest father, her the happiest wife. Exit. Scene changes to the street before Sir Jealous's door. Enter Marplow, Solus. I have hunted all over the town for Charles but can't find him, and by whispers scouting at the end of the street, I suspect he must be in this house again. I'm informed, too, that he has borrowed a Spanish habit out of the playhouse. What can it mean? Enter a servant of Sir Jealous's to him out of the house. Hargy, sir, do you belong to this house? Yes, sir. Pray, can you tell if there be a gentleman in it, in Spanish habit? There is a Spanish gentleman within that is just a going to marry my young lady, sir. Are you sure he is a Spanish gentleman? I'm sure he speaks no English that I hear of. Hmm, then that can't be him I want, for it is an English gentleman, although I suppose he may be dressed like a Spaniard, that I inquire after. Servant aside. Ha! <laughs> Who knows, but this may be an impostor. I'll inform my master, for if he should be imposed upon, he'll beat us all round. Pray come in, sir, and see if this be the person you inquire for. Scene changes to the inside the house. Enter Marplow. So, this was a good contrivance. If this be Charles, now will he wonder how I found him out. Enter servant and jealous. What is your earnest business, blockhead, that you must speak with me before the ceremony's past? Ah, who's this? Why, this gentleman, sir, wants another gentleman in Spanish habit, he says. In Spanish habit? Tis some friend of Signor Don Diego's, I warrant. Sir, I suppose you would speak with Signor Barbinetto? Hey, day, what the devil does he say now? Sir, I don't understand you. Don't you understand Spanish, sir? Not I indeed, sir. I thought you had known Signor Barbinetto. Not I, upon my word, sir. What, then, you'd speak with his friend, the English merchant, Mr. Meanwell? Neither, sir, not I. Why, who are you, then, sir, and what do you want? Nay, nothing at all, not I, sir. 
Pox on him. I wish I were out. He begins to exalt his voice. I shall be beaten again. Nothing at all, sir. Why, then, what business have you in my house, huh? You said you wanted a gentleman in Spanish habit. Why, I... But his name is neither Barbinito nor Meanwell. What is his name, then, sir, huh? Now I look at you again, I believe you are the rogue threatened me with half a dozen myrmidons. Speak, sir, who is it you look for? Or, or... A terrible old dog. Why, sir, only an honest young fellow of my acquaintance. I thought that here might be a ball, and that he might have been here at a masquerade. Tis Charles, Sir Francis Gripe's son because I know he used to come hither sometimes. Did he so? Not that I know of, I'm sure. Pray heaven that this be Don Diego. If I should be tricked now. Ah, my heart misgives me plaguely. Within there, stop the marriage. Run, sirrah, call all my servants. I'll be satisfied that this is Senor Pedro's son, ere he has my daughter. Oh, Sir George, what have I done now? Enter Sir George with a drawn sword between the scenes. Ha, Marplot here. Oh, the unlucky dog. What's the matter, Sir Jealous? Nay, I don't know the matter, Mr. Meanwell. The Marplot going up to Sir George. Upon my soul, Sir George. Nay, then, I'm betrayed, ruined, undone, Thebes, traitors, rogues. Offers to go in. Stop the marriage, I say. I say, go on, Mr. Tackham. Nay, no entering here. I guard this passage, old gentleman. The act and deed were both your own, and I'll see him signed or die for it enter servants a pox on the act and deed fall on knock him down ay come on scoundrels i'll prick your jackets for you zounds sirrah i'll be revenged on you beats marplow ay there your vengeance is due ha <laughs> ha <laughs> Why, what, what do you beat me for? I ain't married your daughter. Rascals, why don't you knock him down? We are afraid of his sword, sir. If you'll take that from him, we'll knock him down presently. Enter Charles and Isabinder. Seize her, then. Rascals, retire. She's my wife. Touch her if you dare. I'll make dogs meet of you. Ah, downright English. Oh, 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 oh. Enter Sir Francis Gripe, Miranda, Patch, Sentwell, and Whisper. Into the house of joy we enter without knocking. Ha! I think this is the house of sorrow, Sir Jealous. Oh, Sir Francis, are you come? What was this your contrivance? To abuse and trick and chouse me of my child? My contrivance? What do you mean? No, you don't know your son there in Spanish habit. How? My son in Spanish habit? Sirrah, you'll come to be hanged. Get out of my sight, ye dog. Get out of my sight. Get out of your sight, sir. Get out with your bags. Let's see what you'll give him now to maintain my daughter on. Give him? He shall be never the better for a penny of mine, and you might have looked after your daughter better, Sir Jealous. Tricked, quotha. Egad, I think you designed to trick me. But look, ye gentlemen, I believe I shall trick you both. This lady is my wife, do you see? And my estate shall descend only to the heirs of her body. Lawfully begotten by me. I shall be extremely obliged to you, Sir Francis. Ha, 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 Poor Sir George, you see your project was of no use. Does not your hundred pounds stick in your stomach? Ha, ha, ha. No faith, Sir Francis. 
This lady has given me a cordial for that. Takes her by the hand. Hold, sir, you have nothing to say to this lady. Nor you nothing to do with my wife, sir. Wife, sir? I really, guardian, tis even so. I hope you'll forgive my first offence. What, have you choused me out of my consent and your writings then, mistress, huh? Out of nothing but my own, guardian. Ha, ha, ha! Tis some comfort at least to see you are overreached as well as myself. Will you settle your estate upon your son now? He shall starve first. That I have taken care to prevent. There, sir, is the writing of your uncle's estate, which has been your due these three years. Gives Charles papers. I shall study to deserve this favour. What have you robbed me to, mistress? Egad, I'll make you a storm. Huswife, I will so. Take care I don't make you pay the arrears, sir. Tis well it's no worse since tis no better. Come, young man, seeing thou hast outwitted me, take her, and bless you both. I hope, sir, you'll bestow your blessing, too. Tis all I'll ask. Kneels. Confound you all! Exit. Mercy upon us, how he looks! Ha ha, never mind his curses, Charles. Thou'lt thrive not one jot the worse for him. Since this gentleman is reconciled, we are all made happy. I always loved precaution and took care to avoid dangers. But when a thing is past, I ever had philosophy to be easy. Which is the true sign of a great soul? I loved your daughter and she me and you shall have no reason to repent her choice you will not blame me sir for loving my own country best so here's everybody happy i find but but poor pilgarlic i wonder what satisfaction i shall have for being cuffed kicked and beaten in your service i have been a little too familiar with you as things are fallen out but since there's no help for it, you must forgive me. Egad, I think so. But provided that you be not so familiar for the future. Thou hast been an unlucky rogue. But very honest. That I'll vouch for and freely forgive thee. And I'll do you one piece of service more, Marplot. I'll take care that Sir Francis make you master of your estate that will make me as happy as any of you your humble servant begs leave to remind you madam sir i hope you'll give me leave to take patch into favour again nay let your husband look to that i have done with my care her own liberty shall always oblige me here's no body but honest whisper and mrs sentwell to be provided for now it shall be left to their choice to marry or keep their services nay then i'll stick to my master coxcomb and i prefer my lady before a footman hark i hear music the fiddlers smell a wedding what say you young fellows will ye have a dance with all my heart, call em in. A dance. Now let us in and refresh ourselves with a cheerful glass in which we'll bury all animosities. And, by my example, let all parents move and never strive to cross their children's love, but still submit that care to providence above. Fini. End of Act 5. Epilogue. In me you see one busybody more, so you may have enough of one before. With epilogues, the busybody's way, we strive to help, but sometimes mar a play. 
at this mad sessions half condemned air tried some in three days have been turned off and died in spite of parties their attempts are vain for like false prophets they ne'er rise again too late when cast your favour one beseeches and epilogues prove execution speeches yet sure i spy no busybodies here and one may pass since they do everywhere sour critics time and breath and censures waste and bulk your pleasures to refine your taste one busy don ill-timed high tenets preaches another yearly shows himself in speeches some snivelling sits would have a piece for spite to starve those warriors who so bravely fight still of a foe upon his knees afraid whose well-hanged troops want money heart and bread old beau who none not even themselves can please are busy still for nothing but to tease the young so busy to engage a heart the mischief done are busy most to part ungrateful wretches who still cross one's will when they more kindly might be busy still one to a husband who ne'er dreamt of horns shows how dear spouse with friend his brows adorns the officious tell-tale fool he should repent it parts three kind souls that lived at peace contented some with law quirks set houses by the ears with physic one what he would heal impairs like that dark mobbed up fry that neighbouring curse who to remove love's pain bestow a worse since then this meddling tribe infest the age bear one a while exposed upon the stage let none but busybodies vent their spite and with good humour pleasure crown the night end of the busybody by susanna sans livre